Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. So today we are going to do a recap and a review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 5, Episode 11, titled Destined for Better. So um, we start off the episode, we see where Stormy is doing the commercial for her brand, um, Canvas Beauty. And remember, she did ask Tiffany if she would um, participate. So we see her talking to Tiffany and um, getting things ready, you know, get, getting their hair done, she's getting her wardrobe together, and then we see Mel come in. So Mel stopped by as well to uh, show some support. And, you know, Stormy thanked her for coming by, you know, based on her busy, 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 busy schedule. So Mel told her, you know, thanks for doing the peace party. I think it was great that you did the party. And she told the ladies about destiny inviting mel she said after they left the party destiny reached out and invited her to her photo shoot for her um, album cover so of course stormy and tiffany have this strange look on their face like they're confused they're like so based on what we saw the other night we would never think that would happen we thought you were like back in the same place or whatever but mel said i'm trying to be cordial i'm trying to you know not extend the olive branch but i'm just trying to be nice to her and then Tiffany asked her, so are y'all friends? And the look on Melody's face was like, girl, you crazy? You crazy or something? So um, Melody did not even answer the question. She just continued talking to Stormy. Stormy was like, you know, you know, Stormy is all about kumbaya, peace, everybody. Let's be all be friends. Let's get together, whatever. And um, Stormy was like, I see y'all working out. I see y'all being friends and being, you know, being good again. And Mel again had to let the ladies know a boundary is not a beef. She had to explain it to them once again. Listen, it's okay with us being cordial. It's okay with us being not being friends. It's okay to walk away and, you know, have the memories of be, having a friendship. But we're not, we're not um, fighting. We are not bitter. We're not anything. We're just not friends. So that's where they um they left it. So Melody to tell the ladies that, you know, she's getting ready to take the annual trip or, you know, before everything happened with her and Martel, they used to go away together as a family to Florida. And um, she's about to take the kids. And, you know, even though the kids saw her and Martel go through what they were going through, it's kind of rough on them. And she wants to replace those bad memories with good ones. So she's like, we're taking the kids to Destin and um, I'm going to invite Martel because, you know, this is a family trip. He wants to be around his kids. So hopefully he will behave. And then the they questioned it, just like how the men questioned Martel, you know, maybe this will confuse the kids and make them think they'll get back together. And now I have to explain to the ladies. She's like, listen, even though they're young, my kids are very smart. I will have to talk with them to let them know. That, you know, this is not a reconciliation. Um, their dad and I are not getting back together. And I will have to let them know, you know, plainly it's not happening. So um, one of the ladies asked Melanie, says, do the kids want that as far as their dad going to Florida with them? And she's like, um, they, 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 at first they used to ask a lot about him and us going away. But they stopped asking. So at this point, I'm not sure. So we're just doing a test run to see how it works out. So they left it at that. I'm sure they'll, we'll get the feedback in the future episodes of how that went with them. Then we have Destiny and her cousin Demi. And she's letting us know that her Madani and her cousin's brand Demure have partnered together. And um, Destiny let us know that while she was getting her brand up and running that her cousin Demi was someone that she reached out to for help and support because her cousin has been in this beauty industry for a while. So I believe her cousin sells uh, cosmetics, you know, everything having to do with cosmetics. So they're going to partner together and, um, you know, release their brand together. So her cousin Demi has an idea of doing a 90s party, 90s themed party. And Destiny was like, she was like, oh, maybe we should invite those ladies. Well, that's not what she called them at first. Maybe we should invite those ladies from the party the other night, you know, when we do have the launch. And Demi was like, you think they'll come? 
And she's like, well, they should, you know, it's just the way she was doing the word. I'm like, okay, that's the knee girl. So then, um, they started talking about, you know, we, we come to find out that Demi knows all the ladies on the cast because she tells that she's done Mel's makeup for Mel's wedding. She's done Tiffany's makeup before. The only person she didn't mention was Stormy, but she says she knows them all because Huntsville, Alabama is really, really small and she is a professional makeup artist, I'm assuming. So she has um, done a lot of the ladies' makeup. So then they were talking about what happened at the peace party and Demi said to Destiny, I know you were hurt. And Destiny was like, really? No. So she told her about what happened to Mel, about the talk that they had, that Mel came to the photo shoot. She didn't tell Demi that she invited Mel. She said Mel came to the photo shoot, I guess, to support. That's just how she said it. So Demi was like, do you think that y'all be friends again? And Destiny was like, no. She said, based on the conversation she ha- we had, we decided that right now we're just going to give each other space. We're going to love each other from afar. Um, yes, we were good friends, but at this point, we're just going to love each other from afar. And Demi was like, um, so what if later on down the line, Mel wants to be close friends again? And Destiny was like, no, we're not. We'll never be close friends again. I'm like, OK, so. All right. So now we know where we are. Definitely with Mel and um, Destiny. Everybody wants them to be good friends and the ladies have come to peace the fact that we'll love each other from afar and a boundary is not a beef. So that's where we leave it with Destiny and Demi. Now we have Mel and Mom. They are packing and getting the kids ready for the trip to Destin. Melody's just let her mom know that she invited Martel and Martel's mom and her mom you know, her face kind of said it all, but she told Melody's like, listen, we need to move positive. We need to f- move forward in a positive way. And if this is going to help it, she's like, I've seen a change in Martel based on, you know, when we, when you first got divorced, he's a little bit more calm. So I don't see anything wrong with it. However, I haven't really talked to his mom since the divorce. So it will give me a chance to talk to her and stuff like that. So they were looking, not really looking forward. She's like, I hope he behaves himself while we're on this trip. And, you know, nothing comes of it. You no, know, nothing really crazy or anything go left. Because we all know Marta have a ten- temper and could say one thing one minute and do something else the next. So now we flip over. We see Marta and his mom. He's there packing and getting ready to go on the trip. Um, they're having a conversation. The mom asks... He asked him a question and he's like, um, I'm just hoping that this is not false hope for the kids. And again, he told his mom, the kids are very smart. So you know what? We'll just deal with it as it comes. So that was the flip flopping back and forth between Melly and her mom and Martel and his mom. So now we have Kimmy on and Maurice. They're in the car. I think they're heading back from her treatment. So Kimmy, let us know that this is. She's going to have a total of 16 treatments over a 20 week period. And this was the first one. She said after the treatment of chemo, then they're going to do surgery. Then they're going to have radiation and then they're going to have a celebration. The fact that Kimmy is just so positive, it's, it's just infectious. I mean, if that was me going through, I would have been breaking down bald in every second. I'm sure she does it in private, but you know, she is not putting on for the camera because we've all met Kimmy from season one and we know this is her personality. So, you know, we're feeling it for her. So she said they also did a genetics test to see if the type of cancer she has is something that could be um, predisposed, like, you know, if somebody in her family had it or something. And they're saying no. So which leads me to believe that this um, cancer she's fighting is purely occupational. Because if you remember in my last video, I told you that um, there are studies showing that a lot of nurses, you know, just happen once they retire or some while they're still working or diagnosed with, you know, largely it's breast cancer. And I did have an aunt who passed away from best breast cancer and she, she was a nurse. So, you know, and like I said, the study is out there. 
so they did the genetics test they found out that it's not predisposed so of course now she could rule out you know her son probably having some type of cancer as well because i'm sure she's worried about him and um the way that they're treating it we are is the fact that they caught it in stage two and they're treating it aggressively since their time of locating it and starting the treatment is a turnaround period of two weeks which Kimmy says is very fast Maurice is like he didn't think it was fast enough but being that she's the professional and she knows all of this you know this is something she deals with on a day-to-day -day level when she's at work he feels that uh you know he she's gonna educate him more than anybody else could so he's you know Try, he's being strong for her, but at the same time, he's learning from her and she doesn't mind teaching. So Kimmy is staying so positive And like I said, it's great to see. So they were talking about that a little bit in the car until they got home. So now we back to Mel and the kids and they are driving to Destin. And Mel is asking the kids, you know, what's your favorite memory of being on vacation, you know, before as a family and the kids were letting her know what it was and stuff and then she shared her favorite memory she also let them know what's the amenities that they're going to be having when they reach their destination um i believe her daughter um malik i'm sorry but the kids one of the kids asks uh, yes malia asks are they going to be staying at a hotel are they going to go to a house and then we find out later on, she tells them it's a house and then all the amenities that they're going to have. So they had this back and forth, five hour drive down to Destin with the kids. Just Mel and the kids, her and four kids. She was like, how am I going to do this? But they made it, I'm sure. Yeah, we see that they made it down there. Now we back and we back to Kimmy and Kimmy has reached home and, you know, her, her parents are there. I'm guessing, you know, other family members, Jalen is there and, um... I'm guessing those are her sisters or whatever. And it was just nice to see her family. They sitting around waiting for her to come back from her appointment. Kimmy goes in to let us know that the timing of everything happening is kind of strange because she just moved her parents closer to her in order for her to take care of them. And it's so ironic that now her mom is going to be turning around taking care of her temporarily. She um, thanks her family for coming she lets them know that um, she's a little bit worried about Maurice because he's been very strong and she knows that it's a lot on him. We had Jalen, you know, ask, you know, what more can I do to help? And she's like, you coordinated with Maurice. And she tells us that when she told Jalen the news, how his reaction was. And right now he is, um, Jalen is a little bit reserved. Of course, she know her son. I mean, she's raised him from a baby, so... She's also saying she's worried about him. So even though she's going through this, which is a life-changing experience, Kimmy is still worried about her family. As she should. That's a mom. You know, you never stop worrying even in, when you have your stuff going on. So she being the caregiver of the family, now, you know, everyone is taking care of her. But she's like, it's a 20-week period. And then, you know, I have high hopes and I feel really positive about this. So... I'm just going to keep my positivity. And then she's like, so now that I've told y'all everything, somebody feed me. <laughs> so that was a, a nice little uh, moment with her and her family. And she also let us know that the type of cancer that she was diagnosed with is predisposed to African-Americans. Like a lot more African-American actually get this disease. So. You know, in a way, Kimmy, like she said, is educating us on the show. This is something that we most likely will not go out and find ourselves. So the bits and pieces that she's given us, you know, we could take that in and expand on it or go dig deeper into it to see if um, we want to find out more information regarding that. So that was Kimmy and her family. Now we have Mel and the kids. They arrive at the house, beautiful house. They go out, Airbnb, they go out and they check out their rooms. They look at you know, some of the things that are there. We see the kids have a Pac-Man machine. Of course, they're looking for the games and the toys, as kids are. But it's an Airbnb, so there won't be much. And I'm guessing it's family-oriented. That's why they put that machine in there to keep the kids occupied. They walk around, and they're picking out their rooms. Of course, that's not how it's going to stay. Mel is going to put, put everybody where they need to be. We see Marta and his mom arrive. 
And we see Martel brought Mel her favorite snack, she said, which is Crunch a Munch. He brought her the wrong one. He brought her the toffee when she wants the butter in the blue box, Martel. You don't know about that? So he's like, they didn't have the butter one, so therefore, he must have went to the Dollar Tree. Because I know they sell that at the Dollar Tree, because <laughs> that's one of my favorite snacks, too. So she's like, I want the one in the blue box. All right. She's like, all right, I'll do it. Thank you very much. They, um, you know, the kids came, greet dad and grandma and stuff like that. And then Mel told them the itinerary for the the night and the, the upcoming days that so she ordered in because the chef that she, she, um, reserved won't be there till the next day. So they have dinner is on them tonight. So the food came and apparently it was wrong. So we go in to find that she had Martel blushing. Because he was like, oh my gosh, she did that for me? So <laughs> what happened is, he's like, Marta, she's calling the pizza spot. She ordered lemon pepper wings. They weren't right. They were plain. She ordered a number of pizza, but she ordered one particular pizza for him, which is supposed to be pepperoni and sausage, topping on the same pizza. But the pizza spot did one pepperoni, one sausage. So she's telling him, now nah, I'm going to call and tell him, that they need to get it right because that's not what I ordered. Your favorite is, you know, so and so and so. Martel is over there grinning and blushing. She's like, oh my God, she did this for me. He's hoping that they got it. Uh uh. It's not going to happen. So he told her, he's like, don't worry about it, Mel. I just have one slice of pepperoni and I have one slice of sausage. And as far as the wings, we'll deal with it. So everybody gets set up now. They're at the table. They said a word of prayer as a family before everybody start eating. And, um, she's like, come, let me talk to you. So she's taking him up and she's like, this is where, you know, this is the sleeping arrangement. So uh, before she even started, Martha was like, Mel, I'm not sleeping with you. <laughs> the look Mel gave him like, dude, not, you know, not dude, but I can't say that word on here. Like, please, <laughs> that ain't happening. So she's like, all right, you and your mom could have this floor. And the kids will be below. Martel is like, but I want to be near the kids. He's like, Martel is one floor below this. And the game room is up here. And they're going to be in the game room most of the time anyway. So you're going to be close to them. She's like, in the confession, she's like, man, just enjoy the trip. It's free. You know, you're in the same house with your kids. Just enjoy the, the, the trip. So then they went back down, eat. And then Martel had a talk with his mom. And, you know, he is. Just say, you know, we're going to keep it positive. We're going to just keep it cool. And then um, we're just going to be here for the kids. And that's it. So that was the episode. This episode was another, not really somber, but chill. A chill episode, I would say. Which is good to see these people actually going through their day. This is what reality TV is about. Like I said, we don't need to see all that fighting and bickering and all the, all the time. Look at what Kimberly is going through. Look at what Kimmy is going through. You know, that one, that hit hard. So, you know, we just have to not really accept, but enjoy what the network is bringing to us. So that is my recap and my review of Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 5, Episode 11, titled Destined for Better. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and like the video. And if you're listening to this on my podcast, Reality TV Space with Georgia Denise, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and download this episode. As always, I do thank you for watching slash listening. And until next time, be sure to take care of yourself and your families. Bye-bye.